Candyman, which came out in 1992. To her summoning the hook-handed Candyman by saying his name five times in a mirror. That's right! Candyman is summoned by saying his name five times, not three. Common mistake, but three is more of a Bloody Mary thing. Even though she has the opportunity to stop after four, like Raimi there does, this babysitter Clara goes all the way and says his name a fifth time by herself. Candyman. And then... She turned out the lights. <laughs> and died! Yeah, we'll count Claire on the list, even though the veracity of this death is pretty dubious, what with this being an urban legend and all. During their negotiation, Bernadette shows up at Helen's apartment. She hears Helen crying and comes in to help her, only to find Candyman waiting for her behind the door. The actual kill takes place off screen, but after Trevor comes home to find Helen with a knife in her hand, we do see Bernadette's body being handled by cops. Five utterances later, she gets to say I told you so when Candyman's hook emerges from Dr. Burke's torso. This kill is the major difference between this movie's rated R and unrated versions, which you may have been able to tell due to the change in film stock quality. It's weird though, I don't think there's anything too ridiculously heinous here. Helen breaks free of Candyman's power by grabbing a flaming stake and stabbing him in the bee chest with it. While he thrashes around angrily, she crawls away with the baby, and although a falling beam lights her on fire on the way out, she does manage to escape against Candyman's wishes. See, I would, but, like, I've gotta get my hair fire put out. You understand, right? Helen and her weird melty head prosthetic are able to get the baby to Anne Marie as Candyman succumbs to the flames. And yes, I know he's a ghost who already died before, but this seems like another kind of death for him. I mean, the dude turned into a bunch of fire bees right there, and there's clearly a charred body left in his place. That's gotta count for something, right? Candyman isn't the only victim of this fire. Helen succumbs to her wounds as well, as revealed in a funeral scene that sees her buried. Damn, Trevor, you really about to bring your new boo to your wife's funeral? That's tacky as fuck. Trevor sobs Helen's name into the mirror a few times, and although the first one is really hard to hear, he does say her name five times. After which, well, you know. Flashing lights warning, by the way, because Helen's jump scare is full of needlessly strobing lights. Helen, the candy woman, question mark, kills Trevor with the murder weapon she's inherited, a gnarly bloody hook. And boy does she love doing it! Flashing lights are over now, cause all that's left to see here is Trevor's bloody corpse as discovered by Stacy, who very inconveniently has a knife in her hand. There were six victims in Candyman, consisting of three women and three men. Although one of the women was just in a story being told, and one of the men was like a, a ghost or something? I don't know. With a runtime of 99 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 16 and a half minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Dr. Burke, since his kill goes on for the longest and involves the most visible hookage. Plus, doesn't hurt that it was followed by that sweet backwards window dive. Doll Machete for lamest kill will go to Bernadette, because the act itself happens off screen, and the body afterward has some weird looking makeup. Candyman, farewell to the flesh. The first sequel to Candyman, released in 1995 and ducks into a bar, and in the bathroom, he faces the consequences of his book cover recital when Candyman appears. With a hook in the back, Purcell joins Candyman's Vic list, getting blood all over his hardcover before Candyman drops him like it's hot and disappears. But he's not gonna be able to abduct another blonde lady into the ether if she's got a lousy, stinking husband running around. So Candyman takes care of that and kills Paul right in front of Annie by sticking a hook through his back. Candyman even lifts Paul off the ground to show Annie just how good a mythical killer he is. You don't need to stare the whole time though, dude. It's starting to get unnerving. Just drop it, okay? Thank you. Candyman. No. Candyman. No, don't. Candyman. No. Candyman. Don't. Candyman. That's a great way to get yourself killed, dude. Candyman puts an end to Ray's stupid smile by hooking him in the back and tossing him through a giant window in the police station. Aw, that lady's day just got totally ruined. Another cop goes to see what happened. Ethan stupidly makes a run for it, earning himself a bullet through the back and a death tumble down some very long stairs. Why would you run in that situation, dude? You're in a police station filled with armed cops. What'd you think was gonna happen? 
There is no candy man. Come on now, lady. You know what happens when people say that shit. They get the hook. Candyman stabs his great granddaughter in the back, although all we see of it is some blood seeping out the front. He drops her to the ground and starts telling Annie that through her, he can continue his legend along their lineage. All while Octavia crawls over to her security system and presses an alarm. Octavia then dies with a quiet apology, which leaves her daughter Annie screaming and her great grandpa Daniel piecing the fuck out of there. Thus, she's all by her lonesome when she finally finds Caroline Sullivan's mirror, resting right below a bunch of spoopy skeletons in the rafters. She reaches for it, but Candyman appears and tells her, no, don't go messing with his soul home, because after all, he wasn't always a bad guy. In fact, here, check this flashback out. Although, is a flashback really necessary? We've already heard how he died a whole bunch of times. You must see what they did. Oh, okay, we've got to see it. Be my witness. If you say so, dude. Actually, like I said up top, this flashback is probably the best part of the movie. No surprise, since it's centered around Tony Todd giving a heart-wrenching performance as Daniel Robitaille is murdered for the crime of falling in love. Sure, the clothes here may look more like costumes in a community center play than period-accurate attire, but dude, they're sawing his freaking hand off. That more than makes up for any low-budget costuming. True to the tale, the racist bastards who beat him down then cover him with honey from a couple of broken honeycombs. Which is, of course, how he got his name. Candyman. <laughs> Candyman. And his catchphrase. Sweet to the sweet! When a biblical swarm of bees approaches them, the lynch mob backs away and allows Daniel Robitaille to get swarmed and stung by all of them. He survives long enough for his love Caroline to find him, and it's a truly sad scene that even Candyman can't help but cry over. Before Daniel Roba dies, he cries out in pain and curses his killers. You will all be damned. With one last utterance of his name into Caroline's mirror, he gives up the ghost. Although, as we all already know, his soul will live on in legend. They successfully escape the torrent of water, and on their way out, Annie grabs Caroline's mirror. Candyman tries to stop her one last time by literally standing atop the water, but she smashes the mirror against the wall, killing Candyman's spirit again by somehow turning him into, uh, glass, I guess, since he breaks into a bunch of pieces and then shatters all the hell. Guess he was more like the candy glass man. There were nine kills in Candyman Farewell to the Flesh, consisting of eight male victims and only one female victim, giving us this very uneven Daniel Roba pie chart. With a runtime of 95 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 10.56 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Paul, cause that dude got raised up off his feet and held real high as Candyman cut him from groin to gullet, just like he's always talking about. Dull machete for lamest kill goes to Ethan, who ran like an idiot and got a bullet in his back for doing so. The staircase stunt was pretty good though. Yeah, Candyman 3, Day of the Dead, released in 1999 what happened to Miguel and his date Lena. They were naked and eating some honeycomb when Candyman decided that he wanted in on these sticky fun times. With a burst of bees through the window, Miguel's date Lena is attacked by digital insects, all while the clumps of fake bees glued to her body grow more and more numerous. But it's Miguel that becomes the first to join the kill count when Candyman appears behind him and kills him by, you probably guessed it, stabbing him in the back with his hook. Lena isn't far behind on the count though, eventually succumbing to a death by bee stings. Not gonna get any sympathy from him, Lena. He's been there and done that. And during a little shower cry providing some sorely lacking TNA, Caroline has a flashback to a time she was walking around in her underwear and found her topless mom dead in the bathtub. The death was ruled a suicide, even though, like, look at that neck, man. That'd be one difficult damn suicide. And sorry, Caroline, I don't think you're gonna be able to stop the bleeding there, telling her to knock it off with all that candy, man nonsense. The candy man does not exist. Oh shit, you've gone and done it now. This isn't real enough for you, Tamara? Candy man's not real enough for you? Guess your dead body's being held up by a strong gust of wind then, huh? Sacco mocks Caroline and her family's obsession with candy man, and he pays for the taunting immediately when he's stabbed by candy man with his hook, spraying blood all over the car. Sacco actually lives long enough to deliver a jump scare as Caroline climbs out of the car, but he dies in the driver 
driver's seat as she slips on a police jacket and runs away. Candyman takes his hook to the gang's ringleader, then proceeds to kill all of them off screen. Although we don't see the slaughter take place, we did see nine of these carefully crafted punks brooding around a second ago, and we do see most of their bodies on screen in just a minute. So let's go ahead and throw all of them on the list. Caroline snaps out of her trance and finally finds her footing enough to get up that hill of bones and, uh, gray stuff. As Candyman pleads with her to stop, she cuts open the painting's canvas with some hook swipes that also tear the real Candyman asunder. A candle catches the painting on fire, which causes Candyman to do the same, and then he... Oh boy, he does this. This happens to him. I guess we'll count that as a kill. Kraft, who was fired from the force, is all pissed and sweaty and throws out a few slurs before threatening Caroline with the Candyman M.O. I'm gonna split you open from groin to gullet. But of course, before he can do that, he's shot through the back by Detective Matthews. Not the Donnie Wahlberg character, but the Ernie Hudson Jr. character, who's apparently able to shoot his targets from around corners? What's going on there, dude? You got them bullet bending? skills like in Wanted? Oh well. Any last words, Kraft? Candy man. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. 16 people died in Candyman 3, the most of the entire gosh darn series. The victims consisted of 7 women and 9 men, one of them being Candyman, like always, and with a runtime of 93 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 5.81 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Detective Sacco, cause his death was straight wacko. A hook through the mouth and out the back of a car seat? That's some vinyl ripping greatness right there. Dull machete for lamest kill will go to the other racist cop, Kraft, who was shot in the back. If it's one thing we've learned from the Candyman sequels, it's that gunshots to the the back make for boring kills.